Okay, so we're back for part two in the lecture for June 3rd in the class Korean Government and Politics. Actually, the previous video stopped a little bit earlier than I hoped, but that's okay. It's, a, it's good to have a stop and we'll go right back to where we were let's just shrink this and we are back to here okay so as i mentioned watching flash mobs pop up in europe and i said it's really a korean phenomenon now there were flash mobs shown in, for example, American movies. It's not something that was exactly invented in Korea, but Korea definitely was a leader in bringing it to the front, making really people aware of it. Okay, so anyway, uh, flash mobs were really a way that Korea put its stamp on society. Then this uh, story jumps into Gangnam Style. Of course, Gangnam Style with Psy was a huge hit right around 2010, 2012, I forget. And of course, Psy is kind of silly, kind of crazy. And he'd been around a long time. He wasn't new at that time. There's our, there's our Gangnam Style. Um, but his silly song is really what kind of took Korea to the front and made people really realize um, what Korea was, what Korea was about. And we can see here's some a picture of uh, service, Koreans doing service. Okay, and so in many respects, Psy took the Korean pop to the world and the world was paying attention before that uh, they heard it a little bit but you know the, the difference between K-pop and J-pop wasn't really understood wasn't really paid attention to but Psy was the person that made the world stand up and take notice okay so that, that's Psy uh, here the article discusses a bit about it but I, I don't I don't care that much that's not that's not the key here uh, then this article starts talking about things like shamans and shamanism and, and Psy as a, a, a approach to shamanism. And that's way too deep for anything I want to talk about. But uh, the article here is where it uh, suggests that the government has a role in diplomacy, of course. But we need to think about how the government and the uh, private sector which includes the arts fit together all right just as important as government is the participation of intellectuals he means scholars he means professors and he has his own idea uh, participation of academics who are able to see the big picture to see how culture fits how Korean culture fits in the world, how Korean culture can complement and excite the world. So that's his argument. And you don't have to agree with him. But it's an idea, it's an argument. And part of what we do in this class is think about arguments. Here's the next argument. Film. Okay, we talked a little bit about Psy, I talked about film. Here he's this uh, fellow who has a Chinese or perhaps Singaporean name is talking about nation branding through Parasite. Do you remember this film? I didn't watch the film. I don't usually watch uh, Korean films, to be honest. But it was a movie that caught a lot of attention. It won some film awards. It made people realize, made people recognize uh, the Korean film industry, not just the TV show industry, 
not just the music industry, but film. Now, film here can mean entertainment movies, but it can also mean the uh, intellectual, make you think deeply, or even help you to understand science or technology kind of productions. Okay, Film is more than just movies. Parasite became the first non-English speaking film in the world to win Best Picture at the Academy Awards. All right. Now, that's important because until then the Academy Awards was basically about American films. I mean, you know, Cannes movie, uh, Cannes Film Festival is a place where there's lots of international films, but the Academy Awards is America, and for a lot of people, America is somehow uh, the commercial peak. It's as good as you can do for a lot of people. Um, and this film wasn't just, you know, uh, gangsters or super action heroes. This was a film that talked about Korea's deeper tension between the rich and the poor, right? And so suddenly the world is seeing maybe a darker side of Korea. And you've heard me talk before about how I'm not sure that uh, the TV shows that the world sees from Korea are ideal because in these TV shows there's always some man is cheating on his wife and somebody is fighting with somebody and somebody's drinking too much and is this really the image of Korea that we want to show? Well, I'm not sure. But uh, the point here is that we can look at films as another way to promote a nation brand. And here he suggests nation branding, uh, another definition, is the use of branding and marketing communication strategies to promote a country's image. So uh, usually when we talk about branding, it is intentional. Uh, BMW doesn't make cheap cars. You can find BMW taxis in many places in Europe. Why? Because they're known to be good cars that last a long time. In the same way you can find Mercedes taxis. The taxi companies buy them because it's a good investment, they last a long time. They're not buying the fanciest version, but Mercedes and BMW do not make junk. They don't make cheap cars. They make very fashionable high-end cars, and they make very good quality, we'll call it middle-level cars. The 323 is nothing like the 5 Series, the 6 Series, the 7 Series, right? It's smaller, it's less expensive. You can buy a nice 323 that has very nice interior, but you can buy a working-class 323 that uh, in some ways is not so different from an Avante. But the BMW 323 is known to be a very good car that will last a long time. So BMW doesn't make cheap cars because they're protecting their image, the brand BMW. A nation brand is about how a country is seen by others. And it comprises a complex bundle of images, meanings, associations, and experiences. Okay, that's way too technical for us. But again... The idea is that a brand is the sum total of perceptions. It's not just from one thing. It's the perceptions or the visions, the images in your mind from a lot of different places all together. All right. So an example of using film for branding. I'm going to close that one. Uh, we're almost to the end of this. One moment. Let me just double check yeah there are two I'm going to use this one first public diplomacy and strategies 
Okay, it's more of the same kind of thing. This one says strategies have so far yet to provide, yet to offer a basic framework. Okay, that while we're talking about public diplomacy, nobody has made a roadmap. Nobody has made a plan that says you should do X and Y and Z. Now this is a 2012 paper again. It's another older paper, but it makes some suggestions. We're gonna pass this. We're going to pass this because we've talked about that. Public diplomacy can be understood as follows. First, should help promote the image of the country. Second, it should help the country form a long-standing relation. Okay? Not a one-shot, not a short time. Long-standing relations based on accumulation of confidence over time we learn to expect and trust and know that we're gonna get third and he says above all I'm not sure it should promote understanding and justification of policies so people will understand that Korea does this that it wasn't something strange but this is normal uh, what is America known for? What is London known? Uh, you know, the UK and sometimes say London known for. What is Switzerland known for? And so, if they do something, it feels right. So, what is the Korean case for public diplomacy? Well, part of Korea's challenge was stemming from coming out of the IMF period, right? Korea was growing in 95, 97. People were just starting to become aware of Korea. Korea was doing very well domestically and selling abroad, but Korea, but the world wasn't seeing Korea. The world wasn't thinking about Korea so much. And then IMF hit, and in some respects, uh, you know, after 19, uh, 1988 Olympics, but in some respects, IMF really damaged the Korean brand because the world kind of knew that once again Korea is looking for help. All right. Korea had done the Olympics, the economy was doing pretty good, people were starting to buy Korean products and saying yeah it's okay and then IMF and Korea looked bad. So really it's since that, since that and that's why things like Psy coming out around what 2005, 2008, whatever it was uh, was really the bounce back. Uh, globalization prior to Psy was really kind of Korea selling stuff abroad, but selling stuff, not really promoting Korea. Uh, again, you know, in, in 1995, 1998, even 2000, Samsung wasn't especially well known. Uh, you, you could buy it, and it was inexpensive, and people would say, oh, is this Korean, or is this Taiwanese, or is this Japanese? Nobody really knew. So public diplomacy is part of the return to the world and becoming well-known in the world. So we're going to pass all that ancient stuff. they compare it to Norway some but uh, starts off to say okay so what do we do once we have done the basics like Korea and Norway have done the basics well Korea is looking at follow-up strategies such as Hallyu drama shows k-pop idols this is all private sector this is all making money for those businesses and that's good for Korea but how does that promote Korea we have to start thinking about that how this is the key for this article how can Korea strengthen its public diplomacy how can Korea improve its brand well the first thing it says is it should network okay I mean as we mentioned in the earlier one coordination but not really top-down but Lots of groups, 
talking to each other and government is part of that and maybe government is the central uh, exchanging information. Well, they're doing this, so how about if you do that, but not ordering. Public diplomacy is not something government can do just by implementing policies. Okay, you can't just say, okay, we're going to fund the films and films will go out in the world and be popular because, you know, we have to find out what people want. It's better to let private sector do it, but we might give some influence and say, well, you know, uh, Hong Kong action movies. Hong Kong is known for action movies, you know, martial art and uh, things like that. And that's not really what Korea is known for. And I'm not sure if that's what we want to do, but we can talk about it and uh, let's, let's see what happens. So government can help coordinate, but not order. A nation must avoid sporadic and confusing delivery of messages. All right? We want people to understand a similar concept. Uh, if we are this year dynamic Korea and next year is Korea sparkling, those two don't have a whole lot in common, do they? Well, maybe if sparkling is about is about K-pop and dynamic Korea is about K-pop, maybe. But if we're changing our theme every year and we're changing our our emphases every year, it might be difficult. Okay. Uh, now, one of the things we talked about public diplomacy is that it is not focused on just one country and Korea's relationship with Laos, but that public diplomacy is much wider, kind of like touching to the world. It's a global approach. I think we're just about done on this. Oh, we missed number two. Oh, right, number two. There we go. Consensus. Consensus is when we find areas where many people agree. Doesn't need a vote. Doesn't have to be 100% agreement. But again, this idea of coordination. We need lots of people, most of the people, most of the players, most of the stakeholders, and people who are interested and involved and affected. We need most of them to come up with the same general idea. Uh, is Korea going to be active in military affairs in Africa? You know, the piracy issue and the Boko Haram, which is the Muslim group that's uh, attacking and invading. The UN is doing that. Korea really isn't involved in that. Uh, does Korea want to be involved in that? Well, we have to have some kind of a message to help people understand what it is we're doing what it is we're not doing. We don't want to confuse that. Okay. Korea went to Afghanistan. It was a peace mission. They were providing health benefits. They were not fighting the Muslims. They're not fighting Boko Haram, which are Muslim. Korea has been very consistent in that it has not been directly involved in activity against Muslim uh, wars, battles, engagements. Korea has stayed out of the Muslim issue. That's probably a good idea. Sorry, checking the clock. All right? So we need to have consensus about what kinds of things we want to do, what kinds of things we don't want to do. So people around the world are interacting with people through the internet, traveling tourism, studying abroad, employment, etc immigration. So the image of Korea that we show in one part of the world is going to trickle into other parts of the world. Okay, We can't narrowly focus. Not only we should be broad, but we have to understand we cannot be narrow. We cannot give a different message to Japan than we do to China. It's not going to work. So what we want to do is to get everybody on the same page. No matter who you're talking to, no matter which group is doing the talking, we all agree this is our message. We all have the same script. Okay? Government, NGOs, public organizations, regional organizations, individual businesses, and individuals. All play a role. Regional approach. Okay? 
we can specialize somewhat in areas, for example, Southeast Asia, Africa, North America, Europe or Western Europe. Um, we don't have to give the same exact same message all around the world. We can customize it a little bit, but we can't be too narrow. How small is a region? Well, that's hard. Here he suggests Asia, Americas, Oceania, which is kind of uh, the Pacific Islands and Australia and maybe Indonesia, okay? Europe and Africa. Maybe we could do Western Europe and Eastern Europe. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. What are the cultures in these regions? What kind of a message is more appropriate? Uh, a European message may not fit so well into Africa. Not because they're black, but because their orientations are different. Their understandings are different. We're not talking about language, but a deeper culture. You know, Asians are not the same as Americans in general. But Japanese, Koreans, Chinese, Vietnamese, we do have much in common. So we try to find things that we can make a broad message that fits regionally. Interactive. Not just I make my recording and I show it. Not just I make a BTS video and show it. We need to let the people on the other side feedback to us and to each other. So you know, BTS has its army and they all get up on the web pages and, and they share ideas and they share photos and they create things and share with each other. Okay? So it's interactive. It's not one way. Like this lecture. It's a one way lecture and that's terrible. It's not my style of teaching. Uh, this semester has been a terrible semester. Uh, the class, because of the way people came and went, we couldn't really develop a community. Uh, many students with similar interests working in projects, just this semester didn't work that way. It became one-way teaching and I hate it and maybe you hate it. We need to be more interactive. That is this paper and we have one last paper to quickly summarize close here we're talking about public diplomacy or middle power diplomacy which we talked about last week as you know uh, it's not the top three or the top five probably not the top ten in the G10 uh, the G20. There used to be the G7. Korea wasn't in it. Korea's economy is probably level number 12 or 13 in the G20. We talked last class about these other middle power organizations that have been created. Well, here we're going to talk about trade. And remember, you have a homework which is to make a report of countries that Korea, countries and organizations that Korea has FTAs with. Well, uh, the reason is because Korea became a leader in FTAs. At one point, Korea was probably in the top three in the world how many FTAs they had. So this starts off with Korea became uh, a major player, a world leader in the establishments of FTAs especially in East Asia. And one of the things they did was work in the middle. They had an FTA with the United States. They had an FTA with China at a time when that was maybe, they were maybe the only country that had an FTA with both. As Korea sat in a strategically advantage, advantageous position, okay? Korea was in a good position, better than many others long term because of the number of FTAs they had with a number of different countries. The Im Young Bak government presented an interesting idea of a global FTA hub. The idea of hub and spokes, like airlines, they build 
one central city that is their hub. For example, Korean Airlines and Asiana Airlines, their hub is in Incheon for international flights. Um, Jeju Air, their hub is, not surprisingly, Jeju. Uh, Air Busan's hub is Busan. E-Star hub tried to be in Chongju, and I'm not sure that that really worked. They're going bankrupt. But the idea is that there's, we can connect a lot of cities, but we don't have every city connecting to every city. Again, it's like that emblem I showed you before about a center and so we have a flight to here there and back and flights to here there and back and flights to here there and back and flights to here there and back and sometimes we can get a flight here to here but maybe only once or twice a day but we have seven or eight flights this way and seven or eight flights this way and so sometimes it's faster to fly to the hub and go back out this is called a spoke and this is the hub so on a bicycle, the hub is the middle of the wheel, and the spokes are the things that go out that connect the wheel, the outside of the wheel, to the hub. So hub and spokes. So the concept was that Korea would create this hub and spokes network for trade agreements. It was a great idea. but. The world changed. The world changed to multilateralization. Okay, lateral means a sign. So, in the earlier years, in the 1990s, in the earliest 2000s, FTAs were usually bilateral. The Korea Singapore, the Korea Japan, the Korea US free trade agreement. But then we started having these multilateral, multi-sided, three, four, five, six countries together creating a free trade agreement. And there was no need for a hub and spoke anymore. Now we're doing this kind of, uh, we could call it a star network. Okay, there's a beginning. Now, connect these. And every one of these five countries is connected to all five countries. Oh, the other four, I should say. There's five, so the other four. One, two, three, four. So this kind of star network is a multilateral arrangement. The hub and spoke is a series of bilateral arrangements. So if country A wants to deal with country C, they have to go through country X. Right? They don't have a direct connection. This is hub and spokes. This is star. This is bilateral, 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 multi-bilateral. And this is multilateral. This is the star network. So, the idea of becoming a hub and spokes bilateral trade agreements kind of went out of date. So, they have some recommendations, they have some policy recommendations. And it says, South Korea can seek ways to assuage over securitization of trade relations. Assuage means to uh, make the stress, make the worries less. Don't worry about it, it's gonna be okay. And over-securitization suggests that we're trying to tie down the money too much, okay? Or possibly even make military part of trade relations. So Korea needs to find ways to 
make people worry less about these things and make it more open, free. Oh, we'll do it if we like, and if we don't, that's okay. Uh, so the TPP they mentioned here is the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It was a, a, a concept led by the Barack Obama presidency. Uh, I don't say that he was the leader, but the U.S. was promoting it. Uh, when Donald Trump came into office, it pretty much died. And they are kind of talking about it again now. Um, but the problem with the TPP was that China was purposefully, on purpose, excluded. And, well, is it really Trans-Pacific when China is one of the biggest trade movers? Well, because there's some military tensions with China, therefore uh, we talk about security. So maybe Korea can help find ways to avoid that. Korea, South Korea should lead a middle power network. Okay, we mentioned last week, our last class, uh, a couple of organizations, a middle power organization that included things like Indonesia and Turkey. Uh, who else was in there? Uh, Mexico that are middle powers that are trying to work together. Here he suggests that the most important task is designing a new regional trade architecture. That means uh, forget about the old style bilateral trade agreements. Try to imagine some new concepts. Uh, he mentions that China talked about a free trade area of the Pacific. Kind of like the way the EU is, uh, but the EU is very political and trade. Inside the EU, they have some multi-nation open trade blocks uh, that may be part of the EU, but sometimes includes a non-EU country. Europe is very complex. It's not just EU. Uh, so China suggested the idea of having this free trade region area many countries that work together um, and that's an interesting idea perhaps Korea can be a broker can be the agent to try to help work in the free trade agreements between China and Japan and Korea maybe Korea can be a kind of a hub between these two just some ideas, not sure. And uh, here it says, Korean, the government needs to prepare, mouth getting tired, the government needs to prepare better or better prepare for multilateral diplomacy. Um, basically, the argument is that maybe the government has gotten a specialty, again, this is a couple years ago, gotten a specialty in bilateral agreements and they need to develop new skills. They need to develop new plans. That's an argument. And we'll see uh, how effective that really is. Okay, um, that's the end of today's lecture. Lectures perhaps, two parts. Again, this is the Thursday, June 3 lecture. There will be a recorded lecture for Monday. Uh, June, what is that, June 6? Uh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the dates. Finishing the semester. Recorded lecture for Monday, June 7th. You must watch by Wednesday night. It will be up by noon on Monday. And then we will have a Zoom on June 10th, which is the review before the test. And then finally, the take-home test, you have to turn it in not later than 11.55 p.m. on uh, June 20th. All right. June 21st. June 21st. Uh, and again, the link to the Zoom is here. Now, remember that we are taking attendance. You have to watch the video in the times that I've identified. And you need to... Uh, join in the Zoom or we mark you not here. Right? Attendance is important. 
please do start working to prepare because my tests are difficult. Okay, thank you very much. See you in the next class.